Hi, this is Thomas from At The Gates. You're watching The Belly. here with Debella and I'm here with Thomas from At The Gates, finally back in Arizona. How's the tour going so far? Great. Um, we're hitting some of the markets we didn't go on the Decibel Tour, but it's, you know, the more southern parts of the, of the country. And it's great to be back here. I mean, some of these places we haven't been for 20 years. Yep. So it's quite amazing for us to meet these people. Any favorite moments so far you'd like to share? Well, I mean, to say that one city was better than, than, than that one, other one, it's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we had some really great moments we really had. Uh, some packed up venues and I mean just like the atmosphere in the south people really get into it you know they're not as spoiled as they might be on the east and west coast so what inspired you guys to actually do a tour like especially coming down here well um, we wanted to go everywhere on this record that we could go and um, basically the decibel tour was full of logistic issues that we couldn't really solve uh, we really want to go out with Converge on that one so um, so we did it okay. even if we couldn't hit all the cities we wanted to so we, we actually, that's why we took some time. We wanted to put together a package that was equally amazing as the Decibel Tour. And I think we did. We decapitated the Haunted and Harm's Way. We have a great package. Yeah, a little bit of a family reunion tour for you guys too, with yeah, the Haunted. A, a little bit, yeah. Um, so it's been about two years since the release of your album. How has your opinion changed since you first released At War With Reality? Well, I mean, <clears throat> First of all, we were so amazed with the reception, you know, in, in every way, like sales-wise, reviews, uh, but mostly you know, the reception for the fans at, at the gigs, you know, because they actually um, showed that they enjoy the new songs as much as the old ones. Um, so we've just been feeding off that energy and just went with it. I mean, we played over 100 shows on this record so far and um, during the course of one and a half year or whatever. And we're just enjoying it more and more. We just want, we just want to be here, you know, all the time, and just keep on doing it. It's um, it's uh, fantastic. That's awesome. So you had talked about the concept being uh, magic realism. Um, are you an author yourself, or is there a favorite book that you have, or can you expand a little bit upon that uh, concept? Well, it's kind of a deep, deep concept. Actually, okay. so it's kind of hard to like to just go uh, go over it really quick. I'm not an author. I mean, I'm a lyric writer in a death metal band, which is kind of like <laughs> not even close to being a real author. Uh, but uh, I have a lot of favorites in this genre, I'm specifically interested in the, the old um, South American writers in this style. Uh, Borges, Sabato, Cortazar, all these classics. Um, I guess I based my writing on this record a lot around the ideas of you know how to structure the work. So it's, it's written in the style of magic realism. And um, the subjects I touch sometimes uh, come close to the subjects in these uh, novels, but uh, mostly they are my own ideas and subjects, but they are written in, in uh, the style of magic realism, which is hard to explain. It's, and there are a lot of different sub-levels, uh, meanings, and uh, it's intertextual, it's got references to other works. And... Um, it's just a really fun thing, a fun concept to work with. It really inspires you, and you can keep on going, you know, instead of really having to figure out what I'm going, what I'm, how I'm going to take this further. It kind of just flows natural when you work on this concept. It's hard to explain in detail, but it's very fun. That's that's cool. That's the first time I've actually ever heard of it. Um, so, have you had a chance to uh, see your documentary that Earache Records did? Well, um, the last one, you mean the, the one on the Banger TV? The last one, on Slot of a Soul, or no? There's another one. Oh yeah, the, the Under a Serpent Sun. Yeah, that yes, one. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, that that's um, actually made by a guitar player Anders. He did that a couple of years back. I think we're talking about two different ones. Oh, there's there's, there's like <laughs> there's there like may be one that you don't know about. <laughs> there's like uh, Eric did a that's a couple of years back. They did a documentary of Slaughter of Soul mm -hmm. that they yes. included in 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 the album, and then there's the documentary about the whole reunion thing that Anders did uh, Under a Serpent Sun. Also, I don't Eric Records, but on on the. Yeah. A bonus thing for the live DVD, and then there's uh, Banger TV. Just recently did uh, a classic album, kind of special on Slaughter of the Soul as well. Um, I mean, all of them pinpoint different aspects of the band. I guess um, I, I really like Anders' movie because it's really um, gets close to us in a way. It's very 
bare bones. It's very, how can you say it? We don't try, we don't pretend to be, you know, bigger than we are or whatever. Something. It's very, it shows us in a very humble light. I like that. Uh, Banging TV, the documentary that they did was, um, I mean, they're so professional. I mean, they're, they're, it really goes beyond these, like, really soci sociological kind of uh, aspects to, you know, how the album has in affected the underground and everything like that. So it's, that's very interesting, too. Uh, whereas the Eric one probably goes more into detail about the recording, you know. Yeah. The yeah. recording details, you can actually, you, you, we tweak the solos and stuff like that. Yeah. So it's, they're all different aspects. Uh, I think fans should watch them all. I mean, they're probably all on YouTube now, so you can watch them for free. You don't have to buy them. But if, you can do still do that too. But I mean, it's kind of like watch them all and try to make your own idea about because they're all, all very honest. Honest. Yeah. It's just amazing to me the amount of time it takes you guys to write a song and then record it compared to how it takes long us to listen to it. Oh, yeah. um, the recording process was fascinating to watch. Um, but looking back over the last 26 years, do you remember the first time your moment of where you felt that you made it, you finally made it, what that was? Well, we never really thought like that. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> oh, sorry. Do you want some water? No, no, that's okay. fine. I got my coke over here. But no, sorry. Uh, we never really thought of it like that, like, you know, we made it or whatever, you know, because that's, that's not why we're here. We are here to, you know, to be as good as possible at what we do and... and um, how can you say it? Uh, express ourselves mm -hmm. honestly, you know, in front of our fans, so that we, they can get a connection with them. And that feeling, I think we got at around the era of Slaughter of Soul when we actually felt that we connected with the fans on a different level. Um, but I mean, career-wise, or you know, that's not, not that, that's not just us. We have day jobs. We don't really care about that stuff at all. You know, it's it's great to, that people come out and watch us. Yeah. They enjoy the record, but. Yeah, but you know, yeah. to be able to concentrate on doing this kind of music, mm -hmm. you really have to have your feet on the ground and not think like that at all. Okay. To focus more on on the music and uh, and the fans than on yourself. So there was an interview um, with you that you said you're in due to touring or two years of touring, and then the future of At the Gates is kind of unknown. Is that still the case, or is there there's a smile there? So there <laughs> there's something going on. Well, I guess you know. Uh, this is the part where I pretend it's unknown, right? <laughs> no, but I'm. I, I, but the thing is, we really want to be here, just right. here, yeah. in the moment, playing these songs live in front of our brilliant fans that we have, and not think about what's going to happen in a year, because that will make this less important in a way, mm -hmm. and take away uh, the feeling of being here. We did that in the 90s, okay. and then we broke up because of the stress. So we don't want to do that again. So we want to be here. Um, Personally, I would love to make a new record, and then some other guys also. But we all need to be in that space at the same time. That's what happened when we when we decided to do at war with the reality. Especially me and Anders, Anders being the main songwriter, me being the main lyricist. When we were in the same zone at the same time, that's when that happened. I can't tell you when that's gonna be. If that's gonna be September, or if that's gonna be 2018, or never. I don't know. I don't know that yet, okay. but I, I, I hope it's going to be continuing because it's, it's a great experience. Well, I have a friend that wanted me to ask, of any of the records you guys have um, come out with, of, of any of those, which one would you make an acoustic album, if you would turn into one, and why? Oh, that's harsh. Um, I, I wouldn't know. I mean, being a death metal vocalist, <laughs> uh, you know, acoustic albums really don't, you know, I, I probably wouldn't be on that a record <laughs> because it doesn't really fit, you know, but... Uh, I would say the, so, the songs got stronger and stronger as we continued. So I think the the last one would be the one that would be most appropriate for that kind of arrangement. I guess you know they've got more melodies, more uh, dynamics to it. I think that would work. Maybe there there's um, there are some covers. Uh, actually, there I, there's a Swedish pop band who did an At the Gates cover not so long ago. I can't remember the name of them. Oh, but you can look. You can look it up. They did uh, "Cold" okay. in a kind of like uh, acoustic pop version, and it, that sounded pretty cool. Okay. Um, so this, like I was telling you, is a uh, bucket list for to see you guys live. Is there any um, tour that would be a bucket list tour for you to either see or to uh, be a part of? Well, I mean, we toured with a lot of uh, 
great bands, a lot of good friends as well. Uh, I mean, Decapitated are wonderful, Haunted are friends of ours. Uh, Converged last year was amazing. They've been friends with me since I don't know how long, and they're an amazing band. There's always great bands out there that, you know, maybe, maybe stretching it as, you know, uh, genre-wise. You know, uh, like Godflesh, Godspeed You, Black Ember, or these kind of bands. I would love to do a tour with something different. But then that means they would be stretching out into the metal community, which, you know, that's probably you know another thing. Voivod has always been a favorite band of mine. Uh, we managed to do a split seven inch with them. To tour with them would be amazing. We talked about that a little bit, but uh, it hasn't really logistically matched up yet. There's a lot of great bands out there. Okay. So we're going to do a little bit of a fun game um, okay. to see how well um, you know pop culture Ooh. in America. So I'm going to show you a picture. You can pop tell me culture. if I, who they are and why they're famous. Oh my God, that woman is famous for having a white dress. I have no idea who, who it, what, can I? Yeah. Oh shit, should I know that? Uh, I have no idea. I've never seen that woman before. Have you heard of Bruce Jenner? Oh yeah, yeah that, that, I, I only know that she, yeah. Yep, yeah, that's. Okay, oh, I, oh, then I've seen that, but then I've seen the cover of um, uh, probably Rolling Stone magazine or something like that. That was pretty famous. Was Rolling Stone? I, I found something like that. That was oh, like maybe. a famous thing. Which, yeah. then, but I only know about <laughs> the gender shit. I don't really know oh, okay. anything else. But I would support that in any way, you know. But so that's, that's all I know. Yeah. Okay. And then. I know that guy. Yeah, that's a big threat, isn't it? Because, yeah, it is the wig guy, right? Isn't it? No? I thought that was Donald Trump, wasn't it? That is Donald Trump. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, we are, we're, for Sweden, we are, you know, ev even the, the most uh, right-wing people are con probably considered left-wing in your opinion, so, probably. yeah. yeah. Uh, let's hope that that doesn't, hap <laughs> that doesn't happen. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I hope not. Well, it's been an awesome meeting you. Um, is there anything that you would like to add or say to the fans? No, uh, thank you very much for, for your time and your support. And, I mean, as I said before, we have the greatest fans, so thanks f for sticking with us. All right, thanks, guys. Thinking violence is what some want. Some want talking because it's their forte.